guys, peace and blessings, peace and blessings. These are the seven people Satan will use to destroy your walk with Christ. Now, I know you guys are looking at this like, Mark, I can't even see that. The reason why is because it's one in the morning right now, and I literally, this is brand new. None of these markers work. I have like 10 of them. None of them work. And Walmart's closed. I just went to Save Mart real quick. They only had these. So I was like, I'm determined to make this video. I'm trying to make this video in the past almost two hours now. So I was like, dude, I'm just, I'm just doing it. So don't worry. If you can't really see as well, I'll go over it all. So anyway, I'm trying to make this video quick too as well. All right, seven people say what you use to destroy your walk of Christ. You have to know this. You have to, you have to, you have to. Let's get it. Let's go. Number one, okay, is church members and religious spirits. Now, you, you can't see number seven. I'll go down number seven towards the end. Okay, so church members and religious spirits. Ooh, man. Um, especially if you're anointed, if God's going to use you for a big purpose, these religious spirits, they're going to have the biggest issue with you. They're actually going to have the biggest issue with you more than everything I'm going to show you on this list. Now, number six, agents of saints, you know, I talk about that's where religious spirits belong to. Uh, not all church members belong here. Some church members are just ignorant, uh, ignorant being the use. Um, so they're not all like evil people, just like, just out of ignorance, right? Um, under a um, false pastor, under a false church that's under dominion of Satan's kingdom. So there's under the witchcraft, under the spell. So you can't really blame them. Now, of course, after a certain amount of time, maybe if they've been warned by God or maybe by people, then, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. So anyways, so, dude, I'm telling you guys, religious spirits, if you're a warrior for Christ, if you're walking that straight, narrow path, they're going to be your biggest enemies. They're going to be your the biggest people who are going to try to shut the kingdom of God from you. Even like what the Pharisees did in the Bible days with um, when people were trying to give their life to Christ, right? Here comes a devil. Here comes a demon, right? here, And that's disguising himself as a light. It's disguising himself as keeping the law, right? Following God, right? And they're actually the most evilest people to shut the kingdom of God from you entering. I mean, there's so many testimonies I could go over where I first gave my life to God. And uh, because I wasn't attending the church, I had a whole bunch, there's a whole bunch of church members who were coming against me saying that I can't be saved because I'm not being a part of their church. And this is why I don't go to church. I don't do any of that. Like I literally just serve God by myself because whenever I try to join these churches, remember I said, if you're anointed, they're gonna have the biggest problem with you. I'm telling you, bro, and they can't help it. Just spirits just using them, spiritual warfare, okay? They're gonna be jealous and envious of you. It is what it is, okay? So religious spirits, and church members watch them. Okay, when you're giving your life to God, when you're when you're, and this is this is what you have to watch too. Okay, maybe you were under a false teaching, or maybe that you didn't know you didn't, you, you didn't study to show yourself approved, right? Uh, now you're actually applying the word of God into your life. Pay attention to how church members treat you. Maybe you're a pastor. Just because someone's a pastor, guys, it's not automatically means he's anointed or God's with them, guys. I'm telling you, this is spiritual warfare. Satan has his ministers too. Okay, so. This under I, take keep take it, take heed of that, guys. So let's say maybe you're living in sin, you're being lukewarm, right? And for instance, like we have Christmas coming up. Christmas is a pagan holiday. You don't want to partake in Christmas. Pay attention to how church members treat you when you start telling them. You know, you may, you may not even want to tell them that. You just want to be partake in their pagan traditions, the traditions of man. They're gonna have an issue with you, all because you're following God. Okay, so. These are going to be the most evilest people. The, I'm telling you guys, this is so real. So Satan's going to use, now, like I said, not all church members Satan's going to use, okay? Um, but religious spirits are under the dominion of Satan's kingdom. He's going to use them. Anybody who's under the religious spirit, we're, and religious spirits are not just in churches. They're on YouTube. They're on TikTok. They're on Instagram. They're on comment sections. I see that. I deal with them all the time, okay? Um, this is who you're battling against with, guys. This is who. So have the armor of God on so you can see, use your discernment, all right? So not everybody is a church member. Not everybody is lifting up their hands, saying hallelujah, praise the Lord, singing uh, worship music. Not everybody, you know, even the Bible says the wheat and tares, they look, they look the same, you know, but one of, one of them is a the devil, one of them is a the child of God, up to, you, up to you to use your discernment. So that's number one. I guess I get, and it's kind of hard to see right now, I understand. But like I said, I was so determined to make this video. I bought this. What is, 10 bucks? What a ripoff. I can't even see it. Anyways, number two. Okay, number two, this is especially for you younger brothers and sisters. I know I've, I've dealt with all these things I'm going to show you guys, all of them. Okay, number two is ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend. So when you're young in your 20s or your teenage years, say, saying's very wise. You know, that's why the Bible says to be wise as a serpent and to be harmless as a dove. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Satan's going to use the person who you have 
your heart's connected to, who you have a soul tie with. And I'm gonna talk about soul ties a little bit uh, later in this video. Like a lot of people, like when I first learned about soul ties, I thought I was just, okay, man and a woman, right? But soul ties goes deeper, okay? It goes deeper, like even the Bible talks about this in Samuel, where um, I forgot what the guy's name is. I'll leave the Bible verse somewhere on the screen. He had a soul tie with David, okay? He loved David as his own soul. So that's a soul tie. So you, so you gotta be very careful you align your spirit and soul with, not just with, a man and a woman, but also who we call brother in Christ or a free lady, a sister in Christ, okay? So please take heed of that, all right? So ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, uh, let's say y'all been together for a year or a long period of time, right? So that's, that's it's hard to like leave a relationship that y'all been together for so long, right? You wanna leave it, you understand this is, doesn't align with your purpose in life, uh, it's toxic, uh, it's not getting anywhere, uh, maybe, you, uh, maybe you found God, right, and you wanna, you know, Keep his commandments, follow, follow the narrow path. That person's not trying to do that. That person's act tempting you, uh, criticizing you, condemning you, things of that sort, just because you want to live a better lifestyle. Okay. Uh, you got to understand, Satan loves to use the people who have a soul tie with because he's smart. He understands that it's not easy to break free from that. Okay. So understand that. That's why you got to be very, very careful. Okay. Um, when it comes to intercourse, when it comes to relationship and dating and all that, be very, very careful who you have intercourse with. It's best is just wait for marriage, wait on God for God to send you your wife or um, or your husband, okay, for your woman, all right? So please keep in mind, he's gonna use these people and you gotta pick a side. Are you gonna choose your, your toxic boyfriend, your toxic girlfriend that's not getting you anywhere? Who's probably just a little Jezebel, probably just a little Ahab, right? Now Jezebels could be men too. A lot of these men today are Jezebels too, okay? Or are you gonna choose God? Or are you gonna choose a straight narrow path? So you pretty much gonna choose God and God gives you this option. You're gonna choose him. The straight and narrow path. It's not easy to enter in, guys. It's not easy to enter in. He's going to use, Satan's going to use his people who belong to his kingdom. Okay. And, his, and in this world today, guys, the majority of people are in Satan's kingdom. M most people are. Even the people, even the, the church members, even the religious spirits, your pastors, your elders. Okay. Dude, this goes deep, bro. This goes so deep. You got to open your eyes so you can see. All right. Remember, you know a tree by its roots. So that's number two. Number three members of your own household. That might be kind of hard to see, okay? Members of your own household, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. I put ETC because I couldn't have much. Um, it could be your uncle, your auntie. Um, heck, maybe even your own wife, your own husband, okay? They could be used too, right? So um, just, you know, now, of course, if, you, if you're married, right, and y'all you know, you're both keeping the commandments, you're both following Christ, and obviously, you know, there's still gonna be a spiritual warfare, but y'all know what I'm trying to say, all right? So the members of your own household, even the Bible says a man's enemies, a man's foes will be of his own household. So it will be family, okay? It will be your own family who will try to shut the kingdom of God from you. I remember, bro, I'm not gonna say no one's name, but, um, you know, I used to have a weed addiction. I used to smoke a lot, right? And I had like half a pound on me. Um, I had like half a pound and I got convicted. Like I was like, like I'm not doing this anymore, bro. Like I'm not, like I, God convicted me so heavy, bro. I was like, dude, I'm done. And I threw it away, right? This is probably like $2,000. That was $2,000. I just threw it away in the trash, like I'm done. And someone comes to take, the, take it out of the trash can to give it back to me. And this person was telling me, not to be doing this no more. But once I want to stop doing it, this person tries to give it back to me. This is spiritual warfare. Satan doesn't want you to give up sin, guys. He doesn't want you to leave a life of sin. He doesn't want you to break the strongholds. He don't want that. And he's going to use people of your own family to keep you under bondage, bro. I'm telling you, this is so real. Generational curses get passed down and it's up to you to break it, unfortunately. Okay, the, the way the world is right now, guys, is because of the elders. They didn't, they, not all of the elders, but most of them didn't, didn't teach these women today. Like you could, like we see on social media, everybody blaming women for being 304s, for being harlots and stuff like that, right? But do they have an, a, a father figure, an OG, right? Or an elder to tell them, to, to train them to be a wife, to train them when they're a child? Now, I'm not making no excuses for them. Some of them did have that and they have to reap what they sow. But a lot of the times, guys, we didn't have like, godly structure in our household when we're younger. Now, I know there are some people who did, but I'm talking about the majority, all right? So a lot of these problems stem from the older generation. So for us younger people who are in our 20s and 30s, it's, us, it's up to us. So we don't pass the generational curses to our children or for your future children if you don't have children yet. So you should train them when they're young, 
Tell them about marriage. Tell them about soul ties. Tell them about, you know, the dangers of fornication, the dangers of um, watching corn, drug use, things of that sort. It's so important for us to teach these children this at a young age so they don't, you know, go old and depart from it, okay? So it will be your members of your own household who are who Satan's going to use, right? The people you love the most, like I said, Satan is wise. He's very smart. He knows what he's doing, all right? So that's number three. Number four is old friends. I know, guys, a marker was so garbage. It's so hard to see, but old friends you used to sin with. Yep. Okay, now, is every old friend... And I, is every old friend saying going to use? No, there's always going to be a few solid, real ones who, who maybe not be on your level, but like who respect your life choices and, you know, respect your relationship with God, respect what you're doing, right? Uh, but the old friends you use, you use like I, I, I remember back in the days, people who I only became friends with because sin was involved, whether we were going to go party and maybe fornicate. Uh, maybe we were going to just maybe smoke, you know, anything that's involved with sin, right? These same people who you're partying with, who you're sinning with, most of them are going to be in a spiritual warfare against you when you want to leave that type of lifestyle. Satan's going to use those people to tempt you to go back, okay? That's, that's, that's the goal of Satan, to get you to go backwards. God wants you to go straight and narrow so you can keep going forward. Satan wants you to go backwards. So he's going to use those old friends, all soul ties, Okay, that you used to sin with, right? The only time they would hit you up, the only time you would chill, the only time y'all could relate was when sin was involved. Okay, when disobedience was involved, and that's when they want to hit you. That's when y'all buddy buddy, y'all laughing and smiling. But it's fake. It's fake love. It ain't no real love in that, right? So same with you two people too to get you. Let's say if you want to stop doing whatever, whatever, right? These people are gonna hit you back up. That's not a coincidence, guys. It's not. Open your eyes. Have your discernment. Okay, number five. Anyone you had a soul tie with, which kind of goes in line with number two, I was telling you guys, um, the book of Samuel talked about um, the man loved David as his own soul, okay? And um, one thing I noticed about, too, that a lot of people who come your way, who they may look like they have good intentions, they may show you love, they may shout you out, they may even help you and support you, but they're just doing that or flatter you. They're just doing that so they can get close to you, to just destroy you, to hurt you. To betray you. That's what they're just doing. So be careful who you have a soul tie with. Be careful who you're, who you're talking on the phone with a lot. Who you're texting. Who you're DMing. Um, this goes deep, bro. This goes so deep. So be careful who you're lying. Your, like I said earlier, be careful who you're lying your soul and your spirit with. Nowadays, bro, unless it's like my wife or my mom or my family or something like that, I don't really pick up the phone. Like, real talk. I don't. Unless it's like, a, obviously, an emergency. I really don't. I'm not really out there like that, you know. I'm just by myself with my family. God bless me with two children and a wife. So I'm just chilling with them, like, for the most part, obviously. All right. So, um, yeah, be careful with the soul ties. Satan likes to use those people because, like I said, you, you have a, you have your heart, your soul's connected to them. So it's hard to, like, you know, say no. It's hard to, like, just fully cut them off. You can, though. It's definitely possible, right? So that's number five. Number six is agents of Satan. Oh, they're coming. They're coming. Agents are saying they're coming, guys. <laughs> Telling you, bro. Um, whenever you're about to level up, right? Whenever you're about to level, whenever life is getting good, life is getting better. Your relationship with God is getting better. Your relationship with your mom, your dad, you know, honor your father and mother so you may live long on earth. So that's important to have a good relationship with them, right? Uh, your relationship with your wife or your husband, your children. Whenever things start, start getting better, and uh, that's going to help not only you, but like I said, your family It's going to help all that, right? Uh, maybe y'all want to get in a relationship, right? You're tired of dating a woman of the world. You're tired of dating man of the man of the world, right? And, you know, a guy comes your way, a woman comes your way, and she's, she's claiming God, he's claiming God, and, you know, you're happy, you're excited. You're moving fast because you're just, you know, you're just so happy, you're so excited. Maybe you're lonely, so you're just thanking God, God, thank you for this person, not knowing that that person was sent by Satan to destroy your walk of Christ. This is probably one of the most harshest things, the harshest pains that you will experience. If you experience this, when it comes to relationship, mostly relationship, that friendship would hurt too, depending on how close you were to that person, um, things of that sort. But when it comes to a relationship, dating wise, this is gonna hurt the most, bro. The agents of saying you got to be very, very cautious of them. Okay, they they come in your churches. Okay, um, they're probably 
You probably texting one right now. You have no idea, bro. DMing, you have no idea. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to say that everybody is texting, calling you, blah, 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 is, is an agent, bro. I'm just saying, like, they're out there and they're praying. Now, if you're not living for God, then you have nothing to worry about. If you're living in sin, he's not going to send those. Satan's not going to send those people. But if you're doing the right thing, saying, walking the straight and narrow, uh, the, you know, crucifying your flesh, you know, the, doing things of that sort, keeping God's commandments, um, best believe he's going to try to uh, throw you off track, guys. So you got to be very cautious of these people, right? Number seven is false teachers and negative influencers, okay? So false teachers, if you're, guys, this is not just on church, man. Oops. This is not just on church. Okay, let me put this back. All right, there you go. It's not just church, okay? Like I said, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, this is, the, to me, this is the new church. This is this reaches more people than the actual church building today, which is a good and bad thing, right? Um, but you have to use your discernment because these false teachers, when they give you false teachings, like I'm telling you guys, I, I haven't, I'm going to give you guys a testimony of this in, a, in um, a different video, a different time. That'll probably be a full video. Um, if you're believing the doctrines and teachings that some of these people are preaching, it could, I'll just say this, it could ruin your life. It could ruin your life. It could destroy your family. Um, it could destroy your children. Dude, this goes deep, bro. And these are all people who belong to the saints kingdom as well, too. Make no mistake about it. Anybody who's a false teacher, anybody who's leading people astray, they all belong to the saints kingdom, okay? Um, so, and also the people, the, the negative influencers, because if you have a social media platform, you are, in a, you're pretty much an influencer, whether you're big or you're small. So people who are always criticizing, condemning, uh, let's say someone who's like new, uh, new to the walk with Christ, right? Or someone may be battling, right? They're, they're striving to please God and they're battling and they're, they're doing what they got to do. These type of people will bring up your past mistakes. They'll, they'll, they'll try to destroy your faith, right? And these are people, church members, okay? Religious spirits. They'll try to destroy your faith. Bring up your past mistakes. Bring up your shortcomings and things that you, that you evolved from. Maybe you had um, an illness back in the days. Maybe you had, um, you know, things of that sort. Maybe you had a stronghold or a certain spirit that you're battling, right? They're going to bring that up against you. <laughs> and even though you've already repented, you've already grown from it, you've been delivered, all those things, right? They just attack, criticize, attack, attack. These are straight devils, bro. And they got to be exposed. Okay, so using your, using your discernment so you can see people for what they are, so you can see them for what they are. No matter if they're hiding under a church or, or any type of position, just don't mean nothing, bro. Don't mean nothing. All right, so these are the seven people Satan will use to destroy your walk with Christ. I know this is hard to see, but if you watch this to the end, it doesn't even matter because you heard what I had to say. So if you guys made it this far, like, share, subscribe, turn the post notifications, comment too if you guys can relate to this. Or if there's anything that I'm forgetting, I wanted to put more but I can see the marker was in and I already reused most of the whiteboard. Maybe I might make part two of this video. Who knows? Anyways, I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.